Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Really excited to finally post this video. I've been thinking about doing it for a long time. And uh, now that I started the streams, uh, I want to take an opportunity to to show, do this video, tell my story, and uh, so people can know where I'm coming from and how I became a software developer. And uh, I might have a few tips and advice. Uh, so please stay tuned, keep watching, and uh, let's just get right into it. Uh, so yeah, my uh, my story is a little not so typical in that, uh, or maybe it is typical, I don't know, but uh, I've actually been into computers for a really long time. Almost uh, just just forever, really, as a kid. And uh, my dad got a computer when I was uh, around 11 years old, and uh, it was like 1996, about. And I just started playing with it, and uh, I've been playing with it ever since. So, like, however long that's been, almost 25 years, 24 years, I guess. And uh, got my first computer, I think, when I was like 12. He he gave it to me and uh, started building a personal website. You know, I just thought, oh, let's, it'll be cool. Let's make a, a miscellaneous website. We'll just have everything and. Uh, and then I started thinking, well, how, how would I do that? And just just started essentially uh, Ulta Visting, I guess it'd be called back then, because I don't think there was even Google back then. I wasn't using Google at least. So I was using Ulta Vista and just kind of searching uh, how to do this, how to do that, you know, and just uh, uh, right, right from an early time, early age, doing like a project-based approach, but uh, on things that were personal to me. I can actually show it really quick here. Uh, this was a, that's essentially my website. That's what it was I'm in the way back machine here because it doesn't exist anymore. But April 1999, that's essentially what it was. And all the kind of stuff that a 12, 13 year old might post about South Park, Simpsons, that kind of thing. So that was kind of my first taste of code. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And I didn't really think anything of it. Definitely wasn't pursuing a career or anything at that point. Uh, no tutorials or anything either, like I say. Uh, just the closest thing, I guess, would be a. Uh, TV show on tech TV called The Screensavers. Uh, they didn't even talk about coding very much, but just a lot of technical stuff and just kind of got me into computers. And uh, I actually had a, had a command station back then, the, the, this thing right here. Essentially was my computer back then, back in the day, uh, right beside the N64 and the Super Nintendo. And uh, that was what I had back then. And uh, that was just, just a kid playing around with a computer. And uh, fast forward three or so years, I guess, and. Uh, I was just doing more stuff, playing around with like little software, little things I thought were cool. And one of the ideas I thought was kind of cool were like about like viruses and Trojan horses and stuff. And I thought, oh, I wonder how you make that. And how would you how would you hide in a computer? And how would you control the CD-ROM or read files uh, remotely and stuff? And I never used this virus or anything, but I actually put it up on uh, Planet Source Code, which uh, might have been in like a pre-GitHub kind of thing. And uh, I have a, a thing for that too here. This This is what it looked like essentially. And just a huge amount of buttons. Definitely, uh, I don't know if that's good UX or bad UX. At least it's all right there in front of you. But uh, that was that was kind of what I knew back then. And uh, similar to how the UI is, the source code was the same. Just one big file with everything in it. And I guess I was about 15 or so when I when I was doing that one. And uh, I, I had a I think I had a bit better workstation back then. I had a, this kind of thing. I'd upgraded. I got the double CRTs monitors, the huge the tube ones, and the I had a little bit better. I think that was like 2002, 2003, around there. Uh, I was just so interested in computers. So it was kind of a, from an early age kind of thing and uh, just really interesting to me. So then, yeah, uh, right out of high school, basically, I, I decided, I mean, I, I thought about university uh, and I don't have a degree. Uh, I'll, I'll say it right now. I never, never went to university, never went to any kind of post-secondary, no boot camps, none of that stuff. Uh, Really, I didn't want to get into debt, couldn't afford it. And I, I already felt like I knew a little bit. So I was kind of thinking, well, what's the first year going to be like? Is it just going to be a waste of my time? And I decided, well, what else can I do in computers? I wasn't even in programming so much there. It was like building computers, just anything with computers. And I kind of started right at the bottom and did uh, like a junior uh, service technician, essentially, a uh, computer repair shop, little mom and pop computer repair shop. And, uh, and that's kind of where I got my first foot in the door, I would say. Uh, they just hired me with no experience or anything. And I kind of took that opportunity uh, and tried to turn it into different things along the way. Uh, by the time I left there, I ended up being the service manager. Uh, I, I ended up working with the, the accountant that had they had there just to make a little PHP MySQL website because they, they said, hey, do you know anything? I said, not really about that, but let's take a look. Let's figure it out. Uh, and me and her made, made a bit of the website together. You know, I won't take complete credit for it, but uh, I made a, a good chunk of, of certain parts of it. And uh I used to make like boot CDs, which was kind of like scripting, almost like DevOps type stuff uh, before DevOps existed, but just more playing around with computers and that kind of thing. 
And that was a fun job. Uh, and then from there, I ended up, uh, like I said, it was about three years with that. And then I ended up doing a, a job doing like radio automation software, uh, which is basically training people on certain software and, and building these like server computers for different radio stations around Canada. Uh, again, doesn't not a software developer job, but uh, again, I ended up finding different ways. Uh, this time I was using BB.net software um, programming language and... Uh, I'd make like little tools for, for the playlist files or, or to cut wave files a certain way and just kind of figuring out as I go, because we're like, Hey, we need this tool. There's no one really making it. And, uh, and that's where I got my first real taste actually was at this company for software development, not even that, not doing the VB.net stuff, but actually there was an opportunity. Uh, Google ended up buying the software that was doing the radio automation software. And there was an opportunity for me to go to Dallas, Texas, which was one of the Google headquarters for the software for two weeks and kind of do tr training with the people. But it was essentially my first look at a, a bunch of Google software developers kind of just uh, working. And I got to essentially work at Google for two weeks. I mean, I was doing training, but I, uh, they really kind of welcomed me there. And I kind of felt uh, like like one of the people, you know, I wasn't doing any programming, but uh, but I actually did end up getting to do a tiny bit because we they had a piece of software that they bought along with all their other acquisitions that they didn't even care about. And it had a bug and it was VB, it was written in VB6. and and. I told them, hey, you know, there's this bug. Maybe maybe I could take a look at it. And they, I think they had the the source code and just some computer in a corner or something. And, and I ended up fixing it, and they they released the fix. So that helped some amount of people. So that was like another another cool thing that I got to do there. And and again, just completely separate from my job title, I think I was a service technician there. And at the same time, that's again. So I got kind of spurred into thinking more about oh, software development is pretty fun. And, and at the same time, I made a, another plugin, uh, another piece of software called. Uh, MPNZB, it was called. This is this is it right here. Which it was just a, a plugin for a piece of software called Media Portal. That uh, it's similar to like what we have now, Kodi or Xbox Media Center, or just just a thing for allow uh, like a media player for your TV essentially. But I wanted a plugin to do certain things, and I, uh, there wasn't anything out there like that. So I just kind of dug into it, and and again, no tutorials or anything. I kind of just like well. Step one, you know, like how do you how do you make a, a skeleton app, just an empty app, and, and just building on from that, and just just googling the whole way, you know. I'm a, I'm a professional Googler or searcher slash uh, problem solver troubleshooter. Is has always been really the only things that I've I've felt that I've ever needed to to do any of this computer stuff, and and that's always been uh, very useful for me. Uh, and then from that, uh, I ended up. You know, I, was, I wasn't really having a good time there at the end because uh, I just wasn't enjoying like building computers and stuff. It kind of the, the, the work had slowed down. So uh, I switched to, to another service manager job at a different computer store. And it was about that time I was thinking, do I want to be doing computer repair? And I ended up getting my Comp, Comp TIA A plus certification if, if people know what that is. It's just another computer repair thing. Let me work at Best Buy or something. I don't know what the purpose of it was. Uh, but I just kind of felt like I was peaking in that career. And at the same time, I was kind of uh, just questioning everything. And a uh, uh, very long story short, I ended up uh, selling everything I own and traveling the world for four years. And uh, that's probably a, a story for another video. And uh, I, I did it all on my, on my own and uh, financed it myself and everything and uh, did it did it pretty cheap. But, uh, but yeah, I did that for a long time and just kind of trying to re rethink what I wanted to do. And uh, just knowing that I didn't really have a career and that I'd just been doing computer stuff before then. So uh, to finish that long story short, got married and then uh, moved with my wife to British Columbia, Canada. And that's when I decided to get seriously back into, hey, let's reboot a career here and let's see what, what I can do. Um, but I was still very uh, understanding of the fact that I didn't really have any experience in software development. And, and I was kind of just looking for an opportunity. And I ended up just uh, taking something that I found through Craigslist with a, kind of a software consultancy had just kind of a, a little bar conversation interview. Uh, hey, do you, do you know how to, to code this, to code that? And I gave him the same thing. You know, I, I'm not sure exactly how to do that that part, but I absolutely think I can do it. And uh, and he he believed in my confidence there and the go-getter style that I had. And and he hired me. And I, I worked with, with that company for nearly four years and uh, and kind of worked my way up there and, and just introduced a lot of new ideas and uh, ended up leaving there as the lead developer. And and that's really when I started taking software development more serious once I got that job and and started thinking, well, what else can I, can I do to, to get better at this? You know? Uh, I mean, I, I'd been a generalist already in it and I, and that's kind of why also I decided, oh, I'm going to be full stack. You know, I'm not going to do front or back because I, I didn't feel like well, where is the division even, you know, I, I still, to this day, sometimes I'm doing front end stuff and it, it feels like, 
this is almost back end, you know, like I, I, this doesn't require the UI or anything. I'm just kind of thinking about logic of things or it's like, it, it's a fine line and coding's coding to, to a certain degree, I, I feel like. So it doesn't really matter in that way. Uh, and that's when I started picking up a lot more fundamental books. And, uh, and I have some recommendations here of some books, uh, Pragmatic Programmer. This was a cool book, you know, um, really good one actually. And what's the title of it here? From Journeyman to Master. Okay. Uh, another one here, Code Complete. This is a cool book too, a really thick one. And I kind of just went through it and just thinking about it. A Practical Handbook of Software Construction. All right. The kind of books I didn't like to get are like uh, this language or that language or learning this certain thing, because I just felt like I'll, I want to dive into that with, with the best tools possible and the best fundamentals and, and find my own own ways to do things and kind of discover the best practices or, or, or do things the wrong way and then come back to them later and, and live and learn in that kind of way. A couple more books I could recommend too. This one's really good. Don't make me think for UX. Another one I got. And and this one here, Soft Skills. This is another one where it's, uh, what does this say? Or the Software Developer's Life Manual. Uh, I don't know if I would quite say it's, it's that, but there is a lot of value to soft skills. And that's kind of a lot of what I've been talking about here is uh, this go-getter attitude and, and knowing about uh, career advancement to a point and, and not worrying so much about what you have on paper, but more what you, uh, what you can bring to the table and what you can... Uh, can show to people in the moment. Uh, and you get those opportunities throughout your career and, and there's chances to jump on that kind of thing. And I, I have for some and haven't for others, but uh, I'm pretty happy where things have gone so far. And after that company, uh ended up going to like a SaaS company for, for the last couple of years and uh, just on the tail end of COVID. And uh, I ended up just switching companies in, in December. And uh, and now I'm, a, I'm considered a, a senior software engineer uh, based on my title. Uh, I know there's some contention around using the word engineer because uh, I don't have an engineering degree, but uh, I mean, they gave me that title. Uh, I'm happy to be called a developer. My old, my last job was software developer, but uh, but it's all the same, you know, I think in that way. And I, I'm hoping uh, you guys got some of that through this. And uh, I'm going to be doing more videos where I kind of talk about programming, things, things, uh, observations I've had about software development and getting a career and that kind of thing. So uh I hope you can tune in, subscribe if you'd like, so you know about the latest videos. And uh, yeah, oh, one more tip I wanted to give, I guess, is uh, it, it's a tip I was kind of mentioning before, but just it's something you've kind of seen as a, as a theme through this is about projects and about finding something that you, that you think is interesting to do. It's kind of like the stream that I have on Saturdays that I just started about an operating system made in React kind of thing. Like just just kind of thinking what would be a, what would be a crazy computer thing to do and you don't have, maybe it won't work. Maybe you won't be able, maybe you'll get stuck. But once you dive in and you start having to ask all these questions and you just start Googling and Googling and Googling, it, it's a, it's a real snowball effect. And that's how a lot of learning happens. And that's how most of my learnings happen. So uh, I hope you can take that one. And like I said, please subscribe. Thank you. It's, it's been great. Uh, see you at the next video. Bye.